The difference between cocaine and crystal meth is that cocaine traps dopamine in your brain, where crystal meth traps dopamine in your brain and forces more dopamine in your brain. That is the easiest way I can explain how both of these drugs work and also why crystal meth is actually more addictive than what cocaine is. So these two drugs you can use pretty much the same way of both are IV'd, both are snorted, both can be smoked where it comes into cocaine you're going to be smoking crack cocaine. Um, you can actually put them into coffee or what have you and drink this and the reason I say this is I've ran into meth addicts who put meth in coffee and would drink it. Uh, you can do the same with coke it will still get you high when it comes to the effects though it's how it handles and what it does to your brain and if you're new to this channel hit the like and follow button comment down below because i share a lot on addiction education again this is for educational purpose only and not to promote anything substance wise but to maybe have you realize the this might be the time to get sober. But when it comes to cocaine, there your body and brain does what's called this reuptake. So you do cocaine produces this massive amount of dopamine. The dopamine's flowing into your brain, you're, you're feeling big mood energy because you have a dopamine receptor here. And what happens is there's so much dopamine being produced that it doesn't do a reuptake. And what a reuptake is, is the dopamine receptor sucks this dopamine in, recycles it back through your body and produces it and does it again. Body is, or the brain is not reuptaking the dopamine. It's stacked up, brain realizes this, shuts off dopamine production. Your brain now starts to permanently rewire itself. The thing that cocaine addicts do not realize, even with meth addicts, is that your brain will start shutting down dopamine receptors. So say for example, your brain has 10 dopamine receptors. As soon as you do cocaine, it produces so much dopamine that your brain goes, wow, this was really amazing. We can't have this happen again though, so I'm gonna shut down too, and now you only have eight dopamine receptors. That's why when you get sober from both of these drugs, it's so depressing, because you might only have one or two dopamine receptors left that is screaming because it's not getting this flood of dopamine anymore, and your brain has to regrow and rebuild a healthy dopamine uh, neurotransmitter receptors in your brain. That's what essentially cocaine does, is it traps it in your brain, it's, it's here, it piles up, and that's why it's only the 15 minute, 20 minute high. Now, on the flip side with crystal meth, it is a synthetic uh, where cocaine does have a coca plant to it. It's not full synthetic at all. Um, it is natural where meth is not. Meth is going to do the same thing. It's going to trap just like dope or just like cocaine does. It doesn't allow for that reuptake, but it constantly forces your brain to keep pumping out dopamine. And that's why that high lasts for six to seven hours. Now, that six to seven hours, your brain is going through all the dopamine. Your, your brain has dopamine reserves. We make dopamine from sleep. We do dopamine through diet, through amino acids, is what our, our brain and body turn into dopamine. We go through all that. You are constantly, it's pushing it out, it's piling up, and that's why it gets to be such an intense feeling and sometimes also overridden because you do have serotonin involved and epinephrine. It's hitting all these different receptors where with cocaine, it's primarily dopamine. With these, it's everything. You're depleting your whole body of these to the point that there's, it's called tweaking. And what tweaking is, is once your brain has exhausted and depleted all this, no matter how much more meth you were to do, you're not going to get necessarily this high because your brain has nothing to turn into dopamine. Um, and that's where the, the, the anger and the mood and the picking, um, that whole self-harm, just shadow people, visuals, all that crazy stuff comes into play. And so these are the real big differences between what crystal meth and cocaine are going to do. Uh, cocaine can cause permanent brain damage. Uh, it shrinks all your blood vessels, so it can cause shrinkage of your brain. Where with crystal meth, you have a more prominent side of severe to permanent brain damage. Uh, it can fry out the serotonin receptors, which takes care of all your cognitive functions. So your mood stabilizer is thrown off, your speech is thrown off, your memory is thrown off. That's why when you meet people who are long-term users of cocaine, they are different than long-term users of crystal meth. And that has to do more with that uh, serotonin side. And that's why those cognitive functions are so different. Um, and these are the big differences between crystal meth. So it's going to give you a, a definitely a different high than what cocaine does. For me, in my personal experience, at being ADHD, this is what I've experienced because I've done both the drugs. I snorted them. Um, I've only done meth a few times. It was never my drug of choice. But cocaine gave me 
big mood energy slowed me down, just made me feel good and normal. It made everything go away. Where crystal meth actually kind of made me have to think. It made me focus in a different aspect that wasn't the escape that I was looking for. Uh, I did not like how it made me feel at all uh, because it reminded me so much of an ADHD med. And typically when I was extremely heavy user at the times, uh, I would be off of my ADHD meds. This was my way of self-medicating and I wasn't using to function, I was using to forget. And that was the thing when it came to both of these that the highs are not the same. And this is why I do share is to maybe understand the insanity of addiction. Why there is a meth addict versus a cocaine addict is we're looking for a different control. We're looking for a different feeling. It's a different obsession. And that's the scary part in, in trying to understand how an addict brain works is we truly are that whacked in the brain that we are going after these different highs. And again, there is no right or wrong way of, of getting sober. It's your way whether it is going to inpatient treatment or outpatient treatment, go to rehab. Rehab is amazing. Find the right one that helps you with the detox, that helps you with the coping tools, the trauma therapy, the therapy in general, maybe getting on the right meds, having a plan when you get out. I mean, it's really important to have that all in place if you're going to a rehab. I have a refined recovery down below. They're amazing. Uh, download Sunflower Sober. I have them down below. Uh, it's 24-hour support with AI sponsor. You have a community. You have a doctors and therapists that are actually available to you now. Uh, you have a journaling and tools and resources. You have everything you need to get sober and stay sober with Sunflower Sober. It's on iOS and Google Play. Uh, see a doctor, a psychiatrist, a therapist, get on the right meds. Go to an AA meeting, an NA meeting, an LNI meeting, go to all the meetings and then some, but don't give up, man. And there's tons of different meetings out there. It's just great to be in an environment with other addicts who understand this. Because what I talk if you're not an addict, you don't get, like what I just said in this whole video, you're gonna be like, this really doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, what's the logic behind this? But for an addict, you're like, yeah, dude, like I would never do that drug because I didn't like how that made me feel, but this made me feel it. I IV'd it because I liked the prick of my skin. It was this whole control obsessive process even with our addiction. And if you're new to the channel, hit the like and follow button, comment down below. It's all about getting sober and staying sober, guys. And for the ones out there fighting through, I believe in you. I've been there before. I've hit rock bottom multiple times. I've relapsed many times. And I've been sober since 7 25 If I can do it, you can do it. And that's what it's all about. I believe in you.